I've always had a fascination and love of Japanese works of art and here at the gallery we have always specialised in Imari porcelain. Examples such as these around me which date from the 17th, 18th and 19th centuries. They're wonderfully decorative and in the same way that Chinese porcelain adds a great deal of colour and form to an interior, these pieces which were made quite often for export to the Dutch market and from Holland were then transported to countries such as Britain. Um, they produced uh, wonderful decorating opportunities for the major houses of the time. These pieces here use blue, red and gold glazes on a white body, an almost translucent body. This is typical of Amari ware which was produced in a town called Arita, which was invaded by the Japanese, where they discovered this special clay called kaolin. And from, from that, they managed to imitate Chinese porcelain wares and the production thereof. In the mid 17th century, the Japanese imposed a self-isolation policy and the only nation allowed to trade with them, in fact, was Holland. And so the Dutch became the only single conduit by which other European nations could buy Japanese wares such as Imari porcelain. Once this policy was revoked in the mid 19th century, there was an international sensation caused by the rediscovery of Imari wares. 19th century pieces such as some of the examples we have here use bolder colours, often tomato red glazes with really deep blues, but again placed upon white grounds. Another example which is worth looking at is this extraordinary dragon vase. As you'll see, there is a black ground with this extraordinary selection of polychrome decoration upon the surface. And rather nicely, you see, and this is another typical feature of Imari ware, this kimono design which is decorated around the collar and the foot of the vase. Kimonos, of course, were in their own way an extraordinary uh, means of decoration and provided an extraordinary backdrop for some of the most creative designs of Japanese decor decoration. And they were often incorporated into uh, Imari porcelain designs and you can see that here. We have a very large selection of Japanese porcelain as well as Chinese porcelain and these pieces which were made to furnish European homes still adorn these houses today. We're regularly asked about the story of Imari and if you'd like to discover a little more, do come and see us here at the Gallery on Pimlico Road. What about this one? When you're thinking Amari, think Timothy Langston. <laughs>